Jamal and John do not like each other. What is breaking? <laughs> what did you just say about my mother? There's been a simmering personality clash between them all year. I heard you! What? Did you say anything about your mother? Why are you As the fight escalates, a teacher in a nearby classroom hears the confrontation. John Taylor it always seems to be in a crowd or making issues. Without support on hand, he stops short of the fight. John, I'm talking to you. Listen to me, boy. Don't ignore me. I'm talking to you. And starts Mama. shouting instead. Taylor! Well, sir, it wasn't me who started it. It was your mouth who started it. Wasn't it, Jamal? Yeah, hugely, hugely challenging. And from my perspective, didn't follow any of what I would expect no. as good practice procedures in terms of managing that kind of incident. It looked like he didn't know what to do. So. He was so hesitant when he came out of that door. He didn't know, yeah. Yeah. he just, he had options. He didn't know what to do. And the body language immediately, it was panic mode. That's right. Looking very vulnerable, looking up and down the corridor and then immediately went into aggressive panic yeah. mode. Until he shouted, and he shouted that one boy, that that, that one boy gave a response. Yes. None of the other students involved in it responded, they weren't even mm. asked to respond. Mm. No, there was, mm. he, he let that audience carry on and continue the goading mm. to carry on mm. watching that fight. So in effect, what we would have wanted to have seen was for him to actually move from that position. He was far too far away and get himself right up there. Not necessarily to get in between those yeah. students, but actually targeting them both individually. Yeah. And also, I would have wanted to see him target one of the students who looked less like a bystander mm -hmm. who was enjoying it and say, go and get so and so. Yeah. So, you know, you've got rid of the audience. You can, you've then got to separate those two boys. Mm -hmm. And you've got to, you know, initially, you may have to give them a running commentary of what you're going to do if yes. they don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you're preempting their behaviour by saying, well, mm -hmm. if you're not going to break up now, then I'm going to have to intervene. I'm going to have to take one of you away or both of you away and physically separate you. Mm -hmm. So they're aware of the consequences of their actions if they carry on. Because mm -hmm. you know, most students, if, you know, if the consequence is for them to get into further trouble mm -hmm. and you giving them a route to get out of that, then they will generally take that route out of That's getting into yeah. more trouble. You know, the thing with that, though, I feel um, that's what we'd have liked to have happened. Yes. But sometimes it's just teachers don't want to be in that situation. I think this is an issue and a lot of teachers will have watched that and said, hold on a minute, I couldn't go in and intervene. Yeah. I would be like him because of this and this and this reason. I think there is an issue around how you're comfortable you feel with putting that's yourself right. in that position. Mm -hmm. That's where you need to then be able to say to somebody, get some help yes. or go and get help. Yes. That is where you've then got to be quick enough to yeah. say, yeah. I need help here. There's okay. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. If you give a clear instruction to one of the other students, go and get Mr. So and so. Once they've heard that name, that's the trigger. Yeah. Quite mm. often because they know that that person who may be senior management, whoever, they know once he's come in, that's it. In that situation, to, to me, it wasn't necessary to intervene because as we saw at the very end of the clip, the two students were on the floor mm. face down. This is the, probably the most tricky thing. Mm and also contentious because some teachers think I can't do that, I can't actually get in between or actually it's, it would make things worse. I mean that's a judgment call on each particular issue but I also think you need to know legally what you can and can't do and that needs to be something that is in the whole school training, your CPD right. and the kids need to know that you can actually handle them as long as it's safe handling and you only use handling anyway as an absolute last resort, because yeah. most of it is prevent. It's got to be prevention. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be a regular occurrence. We didn't, we wouldn't want something to continue there, and then say, well, why didn't, why wasn't there an intervention? Yeah. Because this could have been prevented. Because basically, he intervened right at the end when they were on the floor. They testified. Yeah. Right. He then pulled him off, so yeah. he did physically intervene. So he did still touch. That's yeah, right. He, he did. did. Yeah, but, but he actually, needed to do it how earlier. appropriate was that touching? Because that. That's, and that's the contentious thing that's as well, isn't it? Because that's when the kid can yeah. say, actually, you pulled me, you hurt me here, sir. This is a bruising from you, not from the other student. Yeah. And, and then when he's asked, what were you doing at the time? Well, he wasn't doing anything because he was on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if he'd intervened earlier, yeah. well, what was you doing? I was pulling or shoving or whatever. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's more... I'd rather get in at the shoving stage. Yeah. 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 Actually physically get myself in between at that point because mm -hmm. it's not escalated to that height where I'm likely to get hit in the same way. When dealing with a fight, move quickly and assertively. Use the audience to get help. And in some circumstances, safe physical intervention is helpful. <laughs>